call this meeting to order of the Regional Sanitation District and the Sacramento Area Sewer District and ask uh, uh, Madam Clerk to open the meeting and please call the roll to establish quorum. Member Daniels? Frost? Here. Um, Natoli? Here. Orozco? Here. Serna? Here. Valenzuela? Here. Bang? Here. Viegas? Here. And Desmond? Here. And you have a quorum. Okay, thank you. And I would ask you to uh, please rise and join me and ask uh, Director Natoli to lead us in the pledge. Yeah, <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Don. Uh, Madam Clerk, please uh, read the statement and public comment procedures. This meeting of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District is being broadcast live on Metro 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metrolive.saccounty.gov. Today's meeting will replay Sunday, December 18th at 9 a.m. on Channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com backslash metrocable14. In accordance with Government Code 54952.3, compensation for meeting of these legislative legislative bodies is required to be verbally disclosed. The amount of $100 will be paid for each member participating today as a member of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, and the amount of $100 will be paid for each board member participating today as a member of the Sacramento Sewer District. Compensation for Sacramento County Supervisors and City of Sacramento Council members is paid to the county and city, respectively to partially offset the costs of those governments. Compensation for other board members is delivered to the individuals. <clears throat> in compliance with directives of the county, state, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the meeting is live streamed and open to public attendance pursuant to health and safety guidelines. The practice of social distancing and wearing of face coverings, mask, or shield is recommended for the health and safety of all persons participating in person during the meeting, although it is not required. To make a public comment, please complete a speaker request form and hand it to the clerk. The chairperson will call your name when it's your turn to make a comment. Members of the public may also dial 916-875-2501 and follow the prompts. When the chair opens public comment, for a specific agenda item or off agenda matter. Callers will be contacted by phone and transferred into the meeting to make their public comment. You may also send a written comment to board clerk at sacccounty.gov and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And that concludes the announcements. Okay, thank you, Alma. Okay, so we'll move to uh, our regional county sanitation district uh, consent matters items one and two. Any questions or comments from members on these two items? I do not see anyone with their hands raised in Zoom. And it looks like no one up here on the dais. Any any uh, public comment on these consent items? One and two? We did not receive any public comment request to speak. Okay. For that, I'd entertain a motion. Move consent. Hume, second. Uh, we had a first from uh, Director Cern, a second from uh, uh, Director Viegas. So um, please call the roll. Member Daniels? Aye. Frost? Aye. Hume? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Serna? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Bang? Yes. Vegas? Aye. And Desmond? Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll move to. Uh, uh, Public comment for items not on the agenda. It's the opportunity for public to comment on, on anything that we don't have listed. Do we have anybody signed up to speak? We do not have any verbal public comments, but we did receive a written public comment, which I emailed to the members and also provided um, copies. Okay. Okay. Then we'll move on to item, I guess item four, right? District separate matters, uh, regional county sanitation district. Please call the item. Item number four is the Sacramento Botanical Garden conceptual proposal to utilize regional sand buffer lands property to develop a regional to develop a regional botanical garden. Okay. Well, Christoph, do you want to introduce it? Just uh, Brian Young will be presenting. That's, okay. a, that's my introduction. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Christoph. If I can get 
You have the rebuttal. We have the presentation. Uh, members of the board, uh, here and online, good morning. My name is Brian Young. I am an environmental program manager for Regional SAN. And I'm here today to make you aware of a proposal that Regional SAN staff have received that uh, involves utilization of a small portion of the 2150 acre buffer land surrounding the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, this is an informational receive and file item. We are not requesting any action from your board on this topic today. So the proposal we received is from a group called the Sacramento Botanical Garden, or SACBO, as they refer to themselves. Uh, SACBO is a 501c3 uh, organization, uh, and their mission is to bring a world-class botanical garden to the Sacramento area. Uh, the group notes that while there's more than 300 botanical gardens across the United States, Sacramento is just one of 15 capital cities without a significant botanical garden. And that's no disrespect to the Arboretum up at Sac State or the Jensen Garden in Carmichael, uh, but what this group is envisioning is on a grander scale. Um, they, they, they think of uh, New York Botanical Garden or the Royal uh, Botanical Garden of London. Um, so, and the group intends to bring, or hopes to bring a project like this to Sacramento in the next 10 years. So to, to uh, explain a little bit more about what a botanical garden is and what this group is trying to do, I thought I'd let you hear a little bit directly from them. I have a short video clip from their website. It's uh, narrated by, um, by one of their board members, uh, Marlene Simon. Uh, she's also their media liaison. Um, you also might recognize her from local TV and radio as she's also known as the plant lady. So let me, if I could advance, how do I advance this over here? Okay, so roll the plant lady. Hi there, I'm Marlene Simon, Simon the, the plant, plant lady, and, and I, I want to talk to you about something that's really important to me as well as the community. Albert Einstein once said, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. As our concrete jungles grow, it's equally important that we also develop our green spaces. Myself, along with a group of people, are working very hard to bring to Sacramento a world-class botanical garden with a plant conservatory, water garden, drought tolerant garden, and much more. A sustainable and healthy city life is possible if we create places for our community and our children to access nature. Rather than just teaching nature, we need to make sure nature is available in order to foster a relationship with our natural world. Of the 35 largest cities in the U.S., Sacramento is one of the few without a botanical garden. A botanical garden is more than just a park. It's a place of learning, conservation, growth, and relaxation. And we want to make this possible, so with your help, we could do so. So please follow us on social media, tell a friend, engage, and donate to make this dream possible. I think that gives you a flavor of, of, of what they're about. Um, the SACBO actually approached Regional Center originally in 2021 uh, with, uh, they wanted to explore the feasibility of locating a botanical garden on the size of about 80 to 100 acres wholly within the open space buffer surrounding the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, staff advised SACBO of the important role that this open space buffer plays to ensure the unimpeded and continued operation of the wastewater treatment plant and also advise SACBO of the significant commitments that Regional SAN has made over the years to open space preservation and to wildlife habitat conservation. And that's been through land use uh, management documents, um, as well as our use of the buffer lands for environmental mitigation projects and grant, uh, grant funded restoration and enhancement projects on the property. So SACBO took this information to heart and they developed a concept where they would take the active components and the, the major infrastructure of the garden and locate it on lands adjacent to the buffer lands and then allow the passive or open space compatible uses to then spill over into about 60 acres uh, in the northern portion of the buffer lands. And this exhibit here, uh, about in the middle uh, of this uh, exhibit, is a, this is a, a early Delta Shores rendering, but that 27 acre piece just south of Kasunas River Boulevard, that's the area where they envision the active uses of the garden. 
And then that 61 acres that's shaded to the south and a little bit to the east of that area, that's where the open space compatible uses or passive uses would occur. So what are those active uses? I won't go through this whole list. Uh, they, they are contained in the, pro in the proposal, which is in your board packet. Uh, but it would be things like a welcome center and gift shop and education center, a wedding venue, amphitheater, restaurant and snack bar, uh, water features, dancing fountains, uh, greenhouses, uh, maintenance buildings, um, all the hardscape, uh, the, the uh, paved courtyards and parking, that would all be uh, in this active area of the garden. The passive portion of the garden that would be a number of different types of gardens, demonstration gardens, uh, gardens that demonstrate regenerative ag practices and garden to fork concepts, uh, pollinator gardens, native plant gardens, drought tolerant gardens, um, multicultural heritage gardens, uh, an open access community garden. And then all these gardens would be, would be surrounded by about 20 acres of native wildlife habitat natural water features, and interpretive trails. So in the proposal, uh, SACBO has actually prepared a conceptual layout. That's what I have on the screen here. And uh, again, the lighter green area, um, or brighter green area, I should say, close up to Kasumnas River Boulevard and Delta Shore Circle South, that's where the active components of the garden are envisioned. Uh, and then those, uh, those gardens interspersed with uh, native habitat um, are in that uh, lighter green area uh, to the south and east of that area. So the proposal also um, uh, discusses some of the benefits or attributes to regional sand with this uh, garden proposal. Uh, the first two, compatibility with treatment plan operations and consistency with buffer lands management objectives. That's the first thing we look at with any proposed use on the buffer lands. Um, and with this particular proposal, uh, while there's a lot of details to be worked out on a conceptual basis, staff does believe that the garden can be designed in a way that would not impede our treatment plan operations and could be consistent with the, uh, with the open space management um, objectives and goals of our buffer lands master plan. Uh, providing active management and controlled access at our property public interface is an important consideration, especially in this area. Uh, it's, it's a rapidly growing area between Delta Shores and the Stone Beetland area, just to the north of the proposed project area. In the next few years, we'll be seeing tens of thousands of, uh, of new residents and visitors in this area on a daily basis. So having that presence and that active management at that public interface could be helpful in our management of all the lands to the south. The garden's gonna be needing a water source uh, and they're very excited about the prospect of potentially utilizing recycled water from the wastewater treatment plant uh, to, uh, for irrigation and for their, some of their water features. Um, and they also submit that uh, the garden could be an excellent platform for regional sand to showcase some of its resource recovery efforts uh, involved with our wastewater treatment process. So not just water recycling, but also biosolids recycling. And then lastly, the, the garden is intended to be a, a, a public benefit, uh, a benefit to the local community, um, producing economic, educational, and recreational benefits uh, to, to, the, to the area, which will include a lot of our rate payers. On the economic front, uh, SACBO estimates that uh, the Botanical Garden could create as many as 150 jobs and bring in about $15 million of revenue annually to the local economy. So just one more exhibit I wanted to share. Uh, this is the same area. Uh, it's the pink line uh, that's shown extending from the treatment plant north up through the proposed project area. Uh, this is just to give you an idea of the proximity to uh, existing recycled water infrastructure. This is a, an 18 inch recycled water line that we have that runs up to the uh, Campbell power plant where it provides cooling water. I also wanted to mention on this slide that this is not the first time that, uh, that Regional San has contemplated uh, publicly accessible open space use in this area. Uh, in 2009, uh, Regional San uh, with approval from your board, entered into a, uh, a, a letter of intent with the city of Sacramento. I see Don shaking his head. He's maybe the only one that re was here to, <laughs> to uh, enter into, uh, have us enter into that agreement. Yeah, I but uh, Bonnie Pinnell was uh, working on it, uh, the council person at the time. So. Right. 
Right. So the idea uh, in what the letter intent uh, described was just conditions in which regional sand would be amenable to a um, uh, to an open space passive use regional park in this area. So restoring habitat, installing trails, water features, picnic areas. So the city hasn't pursued that concept since 2009, but in recent talks with city staff, they also have not dismissed revisiting that I idea. Um, but in terms of the SACBO proposal, they do not consider the SACBO proposal mutually exclusive of an open space park by the city in this area in the future. Um, the city has not taken any formal action with uh, the SACBO proposal, uh, but they have acknowledged that they've been in discussions with the group. Um, and uh, city support uh, and, and actually the Delta Shores development support is gonna be essential for this project or for this proposal to move forward. The, the 27 acre active use component of the, of the project that I've mentioned a few times in this exhibit, it's outlined in blue. Uh, that's actually owned by the Delta Shores developer, MNH Realty Partners, and it's uh, dedicated or committed to the city of Sacramento to be used as a community park. That, um, that, that 27 acre commitment may be changing over time. Uh, there's been some changes to the level of service standards for parkland um, in recent years that could allow the developer to remap and reduce that footprint to about 10 acres. But whether it's 10 acres or 27 acres, um, the SACBO is gonna need to continue their discussions with the developer and the city to determine just how and how much of that property can be utilized to support this botanical garden. So SACBO is gonna continue their discussions with, with the developer and with the city as well as they continue with regional SAN. Um, and they also recognize that there's, there's several other steps that they need to uh, get through before a ribbon cutting ceremony um, uh, for the botanical garden. Uh, a feasibility study, a business plan, selecting design consultants, um, developing the garden design, which where they're going to be soliciting uh, input from the community, land use agreements with regional sand and the city of Sacramento, uh, maybe also throw in uh, uh, Delta Shores in that mix, budget development, a capital campaign, raising the money for this, this effort, um, entitlements, uh, permits, CEQA compliance, construction, and eventually project development. So it's a lot to cover in, in 10 years. Um, I highlighted one uh, bullet on here, and that's land use agreements with regional SAN. Uh, and that's because any sort of long-term lease agreement or other type of land use agreement, or even a commitment to enter into a long-term uh, land use agreement, uh, will require action from your board. And so we would bring this item back. Uh, before doing so, we would of course be looking at the latest plans and designs and making sure that they're compatible with our treatment plan operations and consistent with our Bufferlands master plan. We would also assess um, compatibility with, uh, with the city of Sacramento's open space intent in this area. And then also just bring forth any, um, any concerns or any support uh, that is expressed to us from the various environmental stakeholder groups of regional SAN. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna continue to stay engaged with SACBO and we'll keep your board apprised as how this uh, concept develops. Um, with that, I, I can take any questions and I also wanna mention that, uh, that, well, SACBO has a seven member board of directors and I believe over half of them are here today. So if you have any questions from that for them or me, um, uh, you can direct them as appropriate. Okay, great, thank you very much, uh, Brian. We have uh, uh, Director Cerna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I, I think the concept is, is intriguing. Um, and I don't know if you can answer this or perhaps one of the board members that's uh, here with us in chambers uh, this morning, perhaps they could. But I, I think I heard you mention that this would be designed to um, contribute revenue or it would generate revenue somehow. So is, is the concept uh, uh, one that includes some kind of charge or, or um, price for the you know for the public to enjoy the botanical gardens? Yes, I I, I could venture my interpretation, but I, I think probably it's best to hear from uh, from Sacbo themselves. So if uh, if I can reach back to Renee here, Renee, please introduce yourself. 
Good morning, Renee Taylor. Uh, nice Good to, to see, see you, you all. Thanks for listening to the presentation this morning. Um, yes, in fact, it would be a privately run uh, botanical garden, much like gardens, um, Bouchard Garden, Kew Gardens, the other one. There's a fee for entrance. Um, there will be p portions of the garden that we would like to have community access to, a significant um, community garden for local agriculture, a playground, some, some, some amenities outside of the garden. But because we envision a project that will be financially self-sustaining, um, it needs to make money. So there will be gates and fees and, and there'll be corporate events and such like that to fund it. Um, thank you. Uh, do we know whether or not uh, the entire 27 acres or a portion of the 27 acres is um, required per the Quimby Act for the Delta Shores development? Um, our understanding, and I think my Vang is on, Council, Mem Council Member Vang is on the call, so she may want to answer. We've had conversations with city parks, city planning, city attorney's office. Initially, the 27 acres was required for the Quimby Act, um, but the city has reduced their, um, their per acre commitment for parks from five acres per thousand to three and a half. Therefore, the Delta Shores community is currently over-programmed for parkland, and so that's part of the component about would there be 10 acres available, would there be less than 10 acres, would there be more, could the city locate, make its community parks requirement in a different location nearby. All of those are discussions we're having with city staff. So if I understand correctly, uh, at the time the Delta Shores project was entitled, uh, the, the Quimby standard for the city was uh, higher. Five acres per thousand. Okay. Um, not to rain on anyone's parade here, but I, I think it's an important question to, to really understand um, early because uh, legally, that I just wonder out loud whether the city is obligated to provide the uh, ratio of parkland per uh, the standard that was in place at the time of uh, entitlement versus kind of retroactively um, looking at a, a lower standard presently to give you the flexibility to, to have some portion of the 27 acres that would not be uh, publicly accessible but for uh, an entrance fee. So. Sure. Um, there's one other um, proposal that we have outlined where the community park can take a portion of the 27 acres and, as Brian explained, um, could bleed into the regional sand land with passive uses and trails and such, such as it was envisioned back um, in that earlier proposal. So there's a hybrid option where you could still get 27 acres of community park if that's what's required and still have enough land set aside so that the active uses of the botanical garden could be on that city portion. Thank you. Thank you, Director Cerna. Um, and I see that uh, Director Vang has her hand raised. Director Vang. Thank you, Chair. Um, just really wanted to first <clears throat> take this opportunity to thank Brian uh, just for his thorough presentation and the members of SACBO. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with several of the co-founders, uh, Renee, who you heard from short uh, just recently, Dr. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Long as well, Derek Lamb and others. Um, and for me, um, Originally, as uh, the city council member for District 8, this area was not in my district, but uh, due to redistricting, it is now officially uh, in, in our district, District 8. Um, and I believe it's actually a really exciting opportunity for our community in South Sacramento and especially our region. You know, if we are able to make this a reality, um, it will be a catalyst uh, for, for our region. Um, while I understand that <clears throat> this is only a conceptual layout um, and this is really a receive and, and file um, in terms of regional sand, um, really thrilled uh, from the presentation from Brian and just uh, the work that has uh, been done up to this point to really showcase how this will actually complement uh, the plans of regional sand, uh, for example, by using some of the recycled water uh, in terms of uh, compatibility, consistency with the bufferland management. Um, I think um, this would be a really incredible a project as well. Um, at the moment, in my conversation with city staff, there is still a lot of details to work out, as you heard earlier from Brian and also Renee. Uh, we do have that 27-acre land next to the buffer land that's dedicated uh, for uh, for the public for a community park in Delta Shores. Um, there's conversation that 
the developer uh, might remap this and make it 10 acres. And so, um, you know, there's still a lot of details to, to work out. We're still in the beginning uh, phases. Um, but, you know, I just want to say that I am committed to advancing this proposal uh, and really hoping that we'll be able to find a path forward. Uh, we are still working concurrently with SAC, with SACPO um, and just uh, city staff as well. Um, and the other part is making sure that we have an authentic uh, community engagement process as well in the South area um, as we move this forward. And so again, just really wanted to say thank you to, to Brian. Um, he's been the point of contact for this project in particular at Regional San and want to thank him for his work and really just all the members uh, of SACBO uh, for their steadfast advocacy uh, to bring something uh, incredible like this uh, to our region and to South Sacramento. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Director Vang. Director Natoli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, I would just echo some of the comments. Certainly, I, I think that does uh, present a real um, exciting opportunity to use uh, words that uh, uh, I remember Bang I just put forward. Um, and I think that, you know, as we look at, you know, the utility certainly of the, uh, what the district, you know, is providing um, on the overall site, but the, you know, purpose of the buffer lands uh, certainly provide that buffer, but also then I think to allow for opportunities like this. I would suggest too that, um, and again, I think the, the, you know, the concept has a lot of merit in, Obviously, we'll take some time to, you know, work out many of the important details and, and then the aspects of actually, uh, assuming that we're to go forward to actually bringing it, you know, uh, bring it to life. But I, I would just suggest, too, that, and I know we have folks in the audience um, that are involved with our Nicholas Ranch project, but we still have the Sims Ranch property, too, that uh, this district has uh, put forward, uh, you know, at least some conceptual ideas for. And I think uh, it, it might be wise... Um, over time, certainly with this proposal, we being entertained to look at how we integrate that uh, with partners that are providing uh, opportunities, one, to learn about the functionality of the sanitation district uh, facilities there and the importance to uh, daily life and sanitation, health and welfare and so forth, but then all the opportunities that because of the wide expanse of property, uh, where it lies, obviously, uh, geographically with wetlands and in, in, in proximity to um, <clears throat> to large populations, uh, certainly city of Sacramento and, and uh, city of Elk Grove and unincorporated areas. I just think there's a real opportunity, and I guess I was just maybe look to, to Christoph and Brian. I think at some point, I know we have a master plan, we have planning documents that you know certainly guide uh, the work, uh, you know, the planned expansion and conversion that we've, you know, been in the midst of for several years now. But I do think uh, around our perimeter and how, again, we can uh, serve as the, not just the catalyst because we have the, the, the acreage and the property and maybe some of the assets like recycled water, but how we integrate that then um, into, I think, um, you know, either destinations for people to visit and or to obviously learn and grow in their understanding of uh, natural processes, but also obviously with the gardens here and in what we've done, you know, thus far at Nicholas Ranch, the educational opportunities I think are just boundless. And I would suggest that with Sims Ranch, which still obviously requires some additional investment and, you know, I think some uh, noodling on what might occur there, but that's an interface right off of Franklin Boulevard. This is off of Calvin Casumas, obviously uh, Nicholas Ranch is on the southern uh, um, tip of the uh, some of the sanitation district properties, but has good access off of Laguna Boulevard. I just think there's a real opportunity over time to continue to grow uses that are compatible, that allow obviously folks to um, uh, partake of, you know, some of the um, uh, things that, that wouldn't otherwise necessarily be available in a more urban setting. And I guess I would just encourage this district in going forward, one, continue to the commitment to Nicholas Ranch, look at the Sims Ranch, and working obviously with SACBO on this proposal and or other proposals come forward. Again, as long as they're compatible with the, the functionality of the uh, you know, the, the plant and what the district, you know, provides relative to sanitary um, you know, sewer service and treatment. But I just think this really, you know, again, it could be another platform for actually doing things that, you know, for generations to come will benefit, you know, people, both visitors, but certainly youngsters and people from all walks of life uh, with open space uses, educational opportunities, and the opportunities to actually participate with hands-on 
uh, experiences. And so I guess I would just encourage us, again, I put a word in for Sims Ranch, uh, but also obviously the Nicholas Ranch, and certainly what the SACBO is looking to do here on the north north end of the of the Bufferlands property. And what we do obviously regionally to the west, uh, you know, with flood protection and such. There's just tremendous opportunity. And I appreciate Brian, your leadership, certainly Christoph, the district staff. And uh, I think this is another grand opportunity for the district to be a real strong partner because of the wisdom that was in place a number of years ago, you know, decades ago, to actually set aside a buffer lands that would provide protection for the plant operations, but now we're seeing the reality of what it could mean to future uses there that are compatible with what we do. So I would just say, you know, go forward and do good work. All right. Thank you. Director. Thank you, Director Natoli. Director Hume. Thank you, Chair. Um, I echo all of the comments of the directors who've already spoken, and I think that this proposal uh, has a lot of promise to it. And But from what I'm hearing, and particularly from the, the line of questioning that Director Cerna uh, engaged in, is that uh, given the uh, refactoring of Quimby for Delta Shores, that there's probably going to be a pretty significant uh, financial lift there uh, if that's the, the preferred site. And I appreciate the comments from Director Natoli that there's maybe some flexibility uh, of other locations that, that would serve the same purpose and, and still not nibble away at the, uh, the the buffer to the actual plant operations. And so I think it, from a sequencing uh, standpoint, if we can get some sort of tacit approval, and it sounds like staff is, is fairly uh, uh, conciliatory to, to the proposal so that uh, the SACBO folks can can start working on a capital campaign and, and raise the money should they need to to buy uh, the land from the, the M and H folks. So uh, I think it's a it's a great uh, public use. It's a it's a great use of the buffer lands, and it would be a great opportunity to uh, bring some exposure to uh, all of the work we've been putting into the harvest water project and the the plant upgrades. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hume. Any other directors with uh, questions or comments? I do not see Anybody? anyone else with their hand raised in Zoom. Okay. Any public comment on this item? We did not receive any um, verbal public comments or written public comments. Okay. Well, I want to uh, add my voice to the, the, the thanks, Brian and, and Christoph and the SACBO folks who are here. Uh, definitely appreciate the comments uh, from the directors and their input. I mean, obviously, there's a, a lot more hurdles to get over, and this is you're bringing this to us very early on, which is which is great. I, I agree that this it really fits in with a, a larger vision uh, that this district has, and uh, I think it's very exciting as well. So look forward to um, just really following your progress and hearing reports back. And this is receive and file. Is that correct? So no action needed by us. Thank you, Brian. All right. Thank you. Okay, next we'll move on to uh, both districts uh, consent matters five and six. I'll ask if there are any member questions or comments. I do not see anyone in Zoom with their hand raised. No one here on the dais. Any public comment on We did not receive any requests to make public comment. Okay. I would move the consent items. I'm second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Director Natoli, second by, I think it was Director Cerna. Got it first, right? Was it you? No, okay. Oh, Director Vegas. Sorry. <laughs> first and second, please uh, call oh, my voice this morning. Actually, actually, and I do need a second from a member of the uh, Saxor District, so I will also I need another I'll motion. Okay, you'll second. Mr. Natoli, do you want to still keep that motion for a Saxor? Yeah. Okay, thank that. you. Uh, I'm okay with second. Uh, <laughs> really throw us for a loop if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Member Daniels? Aye. Frost? Aye. Hume? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Vang? Yes. Viegas? Aye. And Desmond? Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Thank okay, you. thank you. Hi. Oh, sorry, Mr. Natoli. I'm so sorry. I figured about uh, please the motion forgive me. On both motions? Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> please forgive me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to exercise a little discretion. And uh, for the regional SAN and sewer district separate matters, item seven, I'm going to hold that until after the other consent items. So I'm going to, we're going to take up items, consent items, Sacramento sewer district consent items eight through 13. Unless there is an objection. 
I'll check. Any, any member questions or comments on these consent items, 8 through 13? I, I just wanted to comment on item, um, item 12, please. Okay. Director Natoli. Yep. Uh, would you like to read me to read? Oh, you called the audience. Thank, Sorry. You. Thank you. Certification Thank you, of the final environmental impact report, adopt findings of fact and overriding considerations, and adopt the mitigation monitoring reporting program for the Hood Septic Conversion Project, um, PLER 2021-00127. Yeah, I just wanted to express a, a deep appreciation to our, our staff and certainly to the community representatives, and I note on another agenda item where I'm moving forward on both Linda Manor and Old Florentown, again, those are... Uh, you know, commensurate efforts, and certainly, you know, uh, appreciate the effort that's gone gone forward on those. But we are certifying the final EIR here and uh, advancing the work. I know we uh, again been working with district staff and the community for uh, several years, and I want to thank uh, Christoph and all of your uh, folks. Uh, I mean, Mike and others uh, have been a part of community meetings, uh, even some recently working with both the community folks uh, and. Hood and in, in the in the town of Franklin, and uh, this is an important effort, uh, one that obviously has taken a lot of work just to get to this point. And I didn't want to just go by and consent without at least uh, noting uh, certainly the tremendous effort that's gone into it. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, paper involved in the uh, environmental impact report, uh, but uh, beyond that, I think the prospect of bringing a sanitary sewer to a, uh, a small rural delta community is so very very important. Uh, and uh, and I want to just say thank you and uh, look forward to the day when this actually becomes a reality. And I know you've had to, you know, negotiate, you know, kind of the gauntlet, uh, certainly of the various agencies and, you know, the funding sources and so forth. But people are excited and certainly ready for this to happen and, and uh, uh, look forward to the day when you can actually, you know, turn on the, 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 the flow uh, and uh, serve this community in a way that will be, I think, good for generations to come. And really does, I think, bolster efforts, and certainly my <coughs> colleagues here, but I know uh, Supervisor Villegas, uh, certainly in his work with uh, matters involving Delta, likewise my colleagues on this board, uh, this is an important asset uh, uh, for the community viability, and I would just note that Hood is still in the um, bullseye as it relates to uh, uh, the proposed uh, Delta Tunnel. And uh, the investment that this county and certainly this district are making, both in bringing um, improved water service, but also sanitary sewer, I think just bolsters the efforts to support our Delta communities. And uh, I know that uh, it's something that uh, uh, folks down there are embracing. And I, I look forward to the day when it actually is completed. So just wanted to express words of thanks, Christoph, to you and your staff. Yeah, uh, a lot of staff, have, as, as you know, have been involved in this, and uh, I want to appreciate their efforts as well. And we thought it was very fitting that we get both the environmental document and the, uh, the design contract for Hood uh, at this board meeting, being, it, being your last board meeting and the advocacy that you've done for that community. So thanks. Very good. good. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Director Natoli and, and, uh, and Christoph. Uh, and this is just one more uh, example of your, your legacy to this county and your advocacy for these, these Delta communities. So, um, okay, any other comments on, on the consent items 8 through 13? No directors with hands raised? Madam Clerk? I do not see any directors with their hands raised. Any, any public comment on these <clears> items? <throat> we did not receive any public comments request to speak. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Hume, I'll move consent. Uh, I second. We have uh, Hume moved, and I heard uh, Director Natoli second. Yep. I see somebody else on the phone. Okay. Uh, who was the second on the motion? Whoever has the music playing. <laughs> I think it was Laloi. And I, and I don't believe Mr. Um, Director Laloi can, can make the motion because he's not a member of the Saxor district. So we need another I can second. second. Thank Sorry. you. Okay. Second. Director Frost seconds. Okay. Thank you. Member Daniels? Aye. Hume? I moved away from the speaker. Aye. <laughs> Natoli? Aye. Serna? Aye. Fang? Yes. <coughs> yes. Frost? Aye. And Desmond? Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Alma. Okay, and I'll move on to item seven, and I'll turn it over to Christoph. 
All right, just uh, briefly, we have our next meeting on January 11th. We'll be electing a new chair and vice chair, and you'll get information on uh, kind of how that process works in your packets at that time. But January 11th is our next meeting. And, uh, and then at this point, we would like to recognize Director Don Natoli for his 28 years, as far as I can count, um, 28 years of service to this district, actually these two districts, both of the sanitation districts. Today's his last board meeting and we just want to recognize your incredible leadership over the years. Um, with that, could Metro Cable bring up a little photograph that we have? There we go. <laughs> so, as everyone knows, uh, Don Natoli, he, he doesn't really have any anything to do all day. He sits, you know, the last 28 years, he's been sitting in his office and twiddling his thumbs and I guess one time he decided he'd, he'd like to try alligator wrangling. So we gave him a little training at the uh, Walk on the Wild Side event and uh, that's the photo that you're seeing there. <laughs> All right, um, I have a couple of gifts for you so we'll, I'll have you come on down and, and we have two items, there's a clock that uh, is from both districts, and then we also have a little echo, echo water momentum as well, memento as well, and uh, we'll provide that afterwards. But. Okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Well, thank you, Christoph. I, I won't be long. I just want to uh, express again my appreciation certainly to uh, all the district staff, my colleagues on this board, certainly uh, past and current. Um, it's uh, uh, an opportunity, I think, uh, for all of us to gain certainly a good understanding of what it means in, to provide uh, you know, public utility service to such a wide customer base in this district over the years. Uh, has grown through legislative action and uh, with the additions, obviously, of our, our new cities, but also the city of West Sacramento and the county of Yolo, uh, work that's been done to not just uh, um, expand the interceptor program uh, to you know carry wastewater to our plant, obviously the echo water, the harvest water projects, which are currently underway, other things we've talked about today. Um, but it's, <clears throat> again, been a real pleasure to have served with, with all of you and to have worked with Christoph and all of his uh, predecessors and certainly district staff. And um, it's important work, uh, often I think it's sometimes overlooked uh, just because it's in the ground and you don't see it, but if you flush and then you, it comes back at you, you know that uh, there's work to be done. <laughs> so, but uh, they do a tremendous job. And uh, again, I think we've looked out for the rate payers, uh, but also looked out for the future of this community as it relates to its uh, health and safety. And it is a really, it's, it's a strong premise by which cities and counties were established as to the general welfare and health and safety of its uh, residents and the folks that are served in those municipalities and county jurisdictions. And this district has been such a strong, strong partner. And uh, I know the board and certainly the, the, the leadership here will continue um, you know, well into the future. So it's in good hands. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to have served uh, on this board and many others during my, my tenure. And uh, I will um, miss you know, certainly the association and camaraderie that comes with serving on a board. And uh, again, but I know it's in good hands. So thank you very much for the clock. I won't have to worry that much about what time to get up anymore <laughs> in a couple of weeks, but uh, this is a uh, gorgeous memento and I thank you so much and I appreciate the, the effort uh, uh, that's gone on uh, over the years. Uh, a lot of successes, and I won't begin to even touch on them, but uh, again, continue the good work. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Director Nicole. Can we have a, a photograph with district staff? Photograph with district staff here in front of the sure. dais? Yes. Yeah, let's get this. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, while they're yes, assembling, please. I would like to suggest that at a future uh, regional sand uh, board meeting we consider uh, looking at uh, the prospect of a Don Natoli lift station. Going board members? Yeah, everybody. He doesn't want to hold his, the clock? Yeah. Yeah, have, have him hold that. 
Can you guys get in a little bit? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. This time you get to be in the front. Yeah. Excuse me. So everybody go to go that way. Yeah, thank you. Hey, McKenzie. Thank you. Yeah, it's not empty. So. Don, if we ever see you sporting uh, alligator cowboy boots, we'll know where, uh, <laughs> where the raw from. material came from. <laughs> <laughs> Chair, can I uh, say a word? <laughs> I believe Member Daniels okay. in the Zoom would like to speak. Okay, Member Member Daniels. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank Don for his uh, 28 years of service. Wow, that's incredible. But I, I don't know if I'll have another opportunity uh, to publicly uh, say this. Uh, I just want to express to Don that I have always found him. I've known him since 1999. I think uh, to be right. most dedicated and prepared uh, elected official I've ever seen. And uh, there's nobody I admire more on the local level than Don Natelli. Thank oh. you for your service. Thank you, Brett, that's very kind. And I've enjoyed knowing you and working with you as well. So thank you so much, it's very kind. Thank you, Director Dan. Any other directors, comments? I do not see anyone with their hand. Oh, Member Frost. Okay, Director Frost. I know I'll have one more opportunity, but just wanted to say, Don, thank you for your service to the county and for all that you have done to help all of us along the way. We're going to miss you, and I wish you well in retirement. You deserve you deserve a break, although I'm not sure you're going to be able to deal with it. I don't know how you're going to deal with it, the slowdown, <laughs> but um, uh, you, you've been a great leader, and we appreciate um, all that you've done, and thank you so much, Don, for everything. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for your kind comments. Thank you, Director Frost. Any other directors? I do not see. Oh, Director <clears throat> Vegas. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also wanted to say thank you, Don. Uh, I think you, you really emulate so much of what we aspire to be, and you've been a great mentor to me. Um, my, my tenure on the Board of Supervisors is always looking for somebody to um, uh, track after and to and to use as a good example, and you've, you've served as that. So thank you very much for your stewardship and your um, taking seriously the responsibilities that we've all been very blessed to have. So um, you're, you're a good example. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. And I appreciate the friendship from all of you. I know I've received a lot of kind comments in recent weeks, and I'm Taking those to heart, but I just, again, you're, you know, stepping away from this, you'll still be my friends, and, and that's a treasure that nobody can take away, so thanks. Thank you. Well, I'm going to keep my powder dry until our uh, Board of Supervisors <laughs> meeting. That's what I, that's what Supervisor Serna. Okay. If, if, if I could, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. Just, Director Krista Whitman, this is her last meeting with this body, and I wanted to recognize her. She has... Uh, 26 years of service with Sacramento County, and she's served this board very ably and capably over the years, and certainly the board of supervisors on many matters. And I don't know if there was a recognition plan or not, but I wanted to, to call that. I know I had a chance to speak with the um, county council office staff uh, to the group uh, about a week and a half ago, and, and uh, I didn't know that until Krista shared it, but I wanted to thank Krista for her, her work over the years with the district and uh, for always giving us good, solid, sound advice. and. Uh, helping us uh, sort through some of the legal matters and entanglements that we you know, tend to encounter as we're trying to do major projects. But uh, your work has been very appreciated, Krista. And so maybe a round of applause. For Thank you, Krista. You. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Director Natoli, yeah. for calling out. Any? I'm sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> Director Hume has oh. his hand raised. Director Hume. 
Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I've had opportunity over the last uh, several months to praise Don uh, publicly and privately. Uh, he is the model public servant and uh, he leaves very big shoes to fill. And I just want to say if you've taken not only his time as supervisor, but his uh, work uh, on staff of those predecessor, I think his service to the board goes back to when people used to hand carry their chamber pots out to the trenches. Uh, he's, he's seen a lot of changes over the years. And uh, the only thing I can say is please don't change your phone number. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> the regional sand reference. An image. No. Yeah, it's too many. <laughs> okay, any other directors? I don't see anyone else with their hand raised in Zoom. Okay. Well, then our, our last item is uh, receive and file. Um, and so with that being no further business, I will adjourn the meeting at 1023. Good job, Mr. Desmond. <laughs>